Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanalays at Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 333 with another exhibition match stream today, starting out with a match between Jasper and Hokomoko on Hide and Seek, a map which I'm sure you guys are familiar with. Very large map, lots of mexes, lots of hills, lots of, well, more so cliffs. Not so much hills, but you get the idea. Not sure how much these players have experience on this map. I mean, it's neither Flipstump nor Failthas. They play this map all the time, or at least Failthas did. Failthas. Anyway, Jasper going for Spider Factory, Hokomoko going for the Shieldbot Factory. So Jasper, I guess, kind of knows how this map works, or at least is thinking cliffs. I can deal with cliffs, I have spiders, that works. Usually does, yes. With Shieldbot Factory, on the other hand, hmm. I mean, it's good. I can't really say anything against it. It's a good factory. It's a little bit iffy on this map because it's, shield bots are very ball-based, whereas this map you tend to have the north side with a couple of different paths, south side as well, because it's mirrored of course, and then the outside on top of that, so you get a lot of small armies moving around, harassing things. Shield bots can kind of do this, but late game shield bot is built around the ball, and that's pretty much how everything's set up. So yeah, I don't know, that's sort of... It'll be interesting. I'm sure Hokomoko will pull up something interesting and cool that'll work, but I just wouldn't personally go for Shieldbot on this map. Mind you, I'm biased. I don't really play Shieldbot all that often. Anyhow, Hokomoko very rapidly going to the northeast, while Jasper scouts out quickly. Hokomoko finding Jasper, finds that Jasper... Wait, Jasper's not... What happened to Jasper? Are, are you playing... Jasper has not been building up. They must have been focusing a lot on their fleas and on their reaver over here. I mean, they know what Hokomoko's up to, but at this point, Jasper's quite a bit behind economically, at least at the start. It's not a huge deal, like one or two metal per second. It's not great, but it's, it's, it's fine. It should be fine. They haven't lost the game. That's the more important thing here right now. Anyway, Jasper setting up with all the mexes, finally getting their main base built up, and the bandit here, which Jasper is hiding from. One advantage of playing spiders. I mean, that's the thing. Spiders on this map. You have cliffs. You have places to hide away. That works. It's a really good choice from there. Anyway, Jasper does have... What vision do they have? Okay, they know what Hokomoko has built. They don't have any vision of the Shieldbot factory right away, and they can't really... If they move this flea, the radar will see it, and after that it'll be... Okay, actually, they could move it in. There's nothing that would kill it yet. There's stuff that will kill it eventually, but I think what Jasper's thinking is that Hokomoko is not going to be going up this hill. If Jasper puts the flea like here, that'll be a problem. That just won't work at all. Anyhow, with... Oh, nice bandit raid there. Hokomoko keeping Jasper's economy down. Which, by the way, had actually been on par with Hokomoko. Hokomoko is not really building up. They have the one convict over the northeast side of the map. But the Weaver to the southwest, it's still building up. Still doing stuff. I mean, Jasper is also building up the south here. The Weaver itself has... Where'd it go? That must have been the commander that built that then. Anyway, at this point, Jasper is going to be a bit behind economically. That's going to be a problem for them. Hokomoko with the bandits coming up and with more bandits harassing around, expecting Jasper to have something to the southwest, which they don't. Jasper does have quite a bit to the center. I think they're going to be just building... No, never mind. I thought they were going to be building up like a bunch of solar plants over in this area, try to protect the center. Make it really hard to get through. I've seen that happen before. A drone did it, I think, in a tournament a year or two ago, or a year and a half ago. That was good. That was very difficult to break through. But I don't think Jasper's going to do that. Jasper seems to be much more naked right now. They have one Lotus. They have the Metal Extractor being built up, which is actually going to be taken out. These bandits coming in over to the north, that's going to completely raid that out. If Jasper's paying attention, this Weaver will live. If not, the Weaver's done. At the same time, Hokomoko going around. I mean, Hokomoko very clearly playing the map. They are playing a lot of small armies, a lot of bandits just running around, raiding everything they can, which is how this map plays. It's, like I said before, rather difficult to play ball-wise. Not impossible, obviously. And the Weaver is going to go down. That is a blow. Jasper's economy already behind Hokomoko, so that's not something that they want to have happen. I mean, at this point, I think this Lotus is doomed. The bandits, however, are actually going south. They're expecting the plus 2.7 to have been taken. It has not been taken, so that's not going to be a thing that can be done. In fact, neither has the 2.4. It hasn't been retaken. Hokomoko expanding far more slowly, definitely focused on killing Jasper's economy. Jasper, on the other hand, much more focused on just building up. Doesn't really seem to care about the fact that they've lost Weaver. They just keep going. I mean, it kind of makes sense. I guess they could use Venoms for Escort, which wouldn't be a bad idea. However... 
Jasper is not playing a factory that has a raider, or at least not a strong raider. So it is difficult for Jasper to go around and raid compared to Hokomoko, who has one of the strongest raiders, in, I think the strongest raider actually, for bots at least. Like, bandits are very tough. 250 health each? Yeah. They can get through a lot. I mean, this Lotus is dead. If Jasper actually gets it attacked. Or sorry, Hokomoko attacks that, which Hokomoko doesn't. Hokomoko goes by. Continue to walk by, trying to figure out what's over to the northwest. Whereas, building up... Oh, also building up a factory at the same time. So, it's... Apparently someone's telling me that this is stuttering on broadcast. Anyway. Looks like Jasper finally getting their army kind of set up. And I guess Jasper is going to be the one that's going to be focusing more on single lanes. They're not going to be focusing on spreading around because I hadn't thought about that. But yeah, right now Jasper, they have the Venoms, they will probably have Redbacks. But despite the fact that Shield Bolts kind of benefit from the ball, they also have the Bandits. And the Bandits can do a lot of work. I mean, eventually you get, well, I guess some static defenses. The problem, of course, in Hide and Seek is that there are a lot of paths. So when you have the paths, you have more static defenses to build up in order to protect from Raiders. And the Raiders have more room to move. Whereas with Spiders, anything can protect against a flea. Or even a group of fleas. Pretty much any number of fleas, honestly. Anyway, Jasper having taken a lot of damage in the main base, going for what looks like a counterattack. These bandits are dead if there's no support, which it doesn't appear there will be. Is that a redback? Yes, it is. So we have a redback coming in here, which it's going to be hard to do. Although Jasper right now is actually running out of energy, not running out of metal. Not entirely what I expected. I really would have expected that Jasper would have had problems with their metal because they've just lost a bunch of metal extractors. But no, they're accessing metal. They need to get more power plants built up. They just haven't really built any of this entire game. They've been focusing entirely on metal. That's been in their entire game plan. So, bit of a pain for them. Hokomoko, on the other hand, full-on switch to gunships. At least, addition of gunships with the Wasp. Very nicely setting up this entire build-up. I mean, the entire eastern side of the map, that's theirs. Hokomoko's got it. Jasper could get a few free kills on there, though. This metal extractor is open. This metal extractor... Oh, the 2.7 in the north center. Wow, that is open. There is nothing that'll save that. Jasper could do quite a bit of harassment with those fleas. Don't think they're going to go do that. It looks like they're focusing more on defense. They want to build up a bit more slowly, push out, get rid of bandits around the map, and I guess get rid of raiders... or reapers. Rapiers! I was almost right. Took me a little while. Granted, the rapiers could deal with the fleas, but I think the fleas could get a few free kills first. The rapiers aren't that fast. And now, moment of truth. Let's see. Two Venoms already going down. The Redbacks doing what they can. Not much. I mean, given the amount of bandits. What, that, what, given what the Redback needed to do. I mean, the Redback did a lot of work. That killed three or four bandits. But it needed to kill all of them. And it didn't. And that was a bit of a problem. This Redback over here in Jasper's base has to move back. There's not much it can do. Hokomoko can just build up. They have the map. I mean, pretty much they can build wherever they like. Jasper has fleas around the map, of course. They have to be careful about that. But that's what the patrolling rapier is for. I really am surprised these fleas are not doing anything. I found that strange. Jasper, what is Jasper paying attention to? Jasper is pretty much focused on their main base entirely. That's it. They aren't focused on the north side at all. They aren't focused on... Well, I guess that's the only thing that's to focus on apart from their main base and what they've been building up over here to the west side of the map. So yeah, Jasper really surrounded. Not sure what they can do from here. They have a good counter setup. I mean, at this point, there's rapiers and that's it. Yeah, bandits and rapiers. Now, rapiers don't get handled by redbacks, but bandits do. So yeah, a redback venom force with a few tarantulae, which there's one already. That could actually work okay. I expect that Hokomoko is going to build Striders pretty soon. I mean, they have plus 50 metal. There's no reason not to. They're building up a couple more caretakers. That's just to spend on the gunships. Ah, oh, never mind. There we are. There's the Strider hub. And Brawlers as well. I'm pretty sure Tarantulas can deal with them. Yeah, Tarantulas can deal with them. But that's not the point. The point is, is that we have a Strider hub coming up. And that Strider hub is going to be building up a Dante. Or a Scorpion. Either way... I don't think Jasper has the means to deal with that. Jasper's switching over to jump. 
probably to get rid of this over here. Very likely going for Firewalker Assist. That's the typical use. Generally speaking, that's how things go. See though, and Brawler is revealed. Jasper losing the north side of their base, which at the same time as a flanking attack over here from the Rapier, there is a Razor trying to deal with that, but some harassment will happen. That Rapier's managing to get some good hits off. And now we have the counterattack from Hulk, from Jasper. Jasper coming into the Tarantulas to get rid of this Brawler. And like I said, we'll be able to do that. There's really no... Imp okay, just to confirm, I mean, I can see it visually, but... 1,000 Elmo versus 600 Elmo. Tarantulas are very effective here. Now, of course, the problem is there's no Venoms associated with the Redbacks. That's a... That'll be an issue if any bandits come in, which... They're actually not that likely to now that I think about it. It looks like thugs. That's the choice here. And even then, those aren't being focused on. It's the Dante. It's entirely the Dante. So, from what I can tell, Hokomoka's entire game plan is just to finish this off. Run with the Dante and win. And Archangels! Not really! Not a Firewalker? Moderator and Archangel. Okay. Moderator to get rid of Rapier is most likely, and the Archangel to get rid of the Brawler. Tarantulas, however, do a great job with that. Firewalkers, however, that's what you want here. But no, looks like Jasper going for... Oh, shoot. I'm sorry, people. I forgot to show what people were actually building. This makes life a lot easier. Okay, so. Sumo's coming... Okay. S Sumo, Archangel, Monker... Okay. The Pyro makes sense. That you want for dealing with bandits. And hey, the Flea's finally doing their job for the north. That's good. That's what I want to see. But with the sumo, I mean, I guess that's for tanking things out. The Archangels make sense for the Brawler, even though it's a bit redundant. The... I mean, the Redbacks are anti-bandit. No support, though, from their factory, but hey, you had the Pyros, so I guess that helps. I mean, the Pyro also kind of tanks. That's really what the sumo is going to be for, though. Sumo's for tanking. Moderator, I guess, for Rapiers. But yeah, this is the counterattack. Hokomoko Battle is the commander. Wow, there it goes! Okay, well, that's commander down. But honestly, my excitement was not really deserved. In all honesty, that wasn't huge. I mean, it was a thing. It was important. But really, given that Hokomoko has 60 metal per second compared to Jasper's 30 and there's a Dante, that commander destruction is not going to be quite as pivotal as I'm sure Jasper would have hoped. Also, Banshees when Redbacks are on the field. Interesting choice. I don't think it'll matter. The Dante is the centerpiece right now. The Dante is basically what's going to be giving Hokomoko the game. I mean, Jasper's making some valiant efforts, but it's really difficult to actually get around. They don't have the resources. They don't really have a lot of units on the field. They have some, but their units are kind of slow compared to what everything else that Hokomoko has. So right now, Jasper's basically hoping that Hokomoko runs into their forces, which they just did. Just lost several Banshees, but so what? The Dante moving around. One mistake being made right now is the Dante is being used to... Well, okay, it's not really a mistake. I mean, if Hokomoko... Well, actually, no, Hokomoko has been scouting. That is kind of a mistake. Why did Hokomoko attack the outside? I mean, it's vulnerable, I guess, but that gives a lot more time for, say, Scuttles to be built. And Jasper right now protecting their commander with a bunch of Redbacks. Scuttle's about to get to the Dante. Is that going to come out? I gotta see. Scuttles are here. Dante is here. They're right in position, and that Dante has 8,000 health. Yeah, it's going to go. Oh, those are. What am I saying? Those are Scuttles. Is it? Sorry. Those are infiltrators, not Scuttles. Which, given that there's a jump bot factory here, and Scuttles are. I think the same cost, actually. No, they're cheaper. Oh no, they're suddenly more expensive. For that many infiltrators, there could have been an infiltrator and a scuttle. But that's not terrible. I mean, that kind of works. At any rate, it stopped it temporarily. Well, okay, possibly permanently. Another That's another 30 seconds, so that'll take a while. But Scorpion coming in here to take revenge, and we already have Jasper's commander down. Jasper only with 5 middle per second. That'll probably be the game. I think this is going to be the game. This Scorpion attack right here. I mean, the Infiltrators did a good job, got rid of Dante, but that's still not enough. And of course, there's going to be more Banshees coming in. There's a lot of units in general coming in. Both factories down for Jasper. I'm surprised Jasper's still holding on. 
they're still going. They're still pushing with the units they have. They, they have a Weaver. They could rebuild theoretically, but no, they're not going to. And I mean really theoretically. Anyway, let's see here. How much metal excess was there? Not much! Only 130 and 180 each. For a 50 minute game, that's actually not bad. Given the overall used... Yeah, for how much used? 35,000 used for Hokumoko. Wow, Hokumoko had just twice as much metal available. But yeah, the excess was relatively low. Good job. I know, I always check that. It's just a thing I check. It's important! I mean, it's often a thing to fix, but no, it looks like both players are pretty on point about that. At least in this game, they were. But yeah, metal income. Oh, wow. Hokumoko really had that over. It was really more energy income, though. Jasper, they have flatlined. You can see here, they flatlined about 16 for most of the game. And then flatlined around 34. I mean, granted, at that point, they could have had reclaim. That's all they could have had. Anyway. That's going to be that, so that game. The next game is going to be... Where are you? Hokomoko and Daimfrund on Isle of Grief. So stay tuned for that. That'll be up in just a moment.